I think one of the experiences that was the most fun was going to the casino and just using his money the whole time. I was having so much fun. You know what? You girls do have fun with that because yeah. I've done that a couple times. And <laughs> fortunately for me, I won and I gave all the winnings to them as their allowance. And so it was a free night for me. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host, Marcus. Welcome to another episode of Secrets of a Sugar Daddy, the number one sugar dating podcast in Japan and the rest of the world, where we pull back the curtains on the good and the bad, and Lily. The explicit. The explicit. No, the shocking. Shockingly explicit. The shockingly explicit Ins and outs, ups and downs. Of sugar dating. Of sugar dating. You're getting my tongue tied. I can't even say all that. So what's happening? Nothing. Just loving Arizona weather. Yeah, it's Loving good. Arizona sports. Yeah, this the is our great time of year. Diamondbacks are killing it. They're going to the World Series, and we're going to a Cardinals game on Sunday. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how are you liking our back studio here now that we've recorded quite a few times here at Pod Populi? I love it. I prefer it. Yeah. I keep asking for another chair and a microphone so I we know. can do four people. I know. Here in the Old Town Scottsdale, they've got two studios in the building, and then they actually have one in the Biltmore area, for those of you familiar with the Phoenix area. If you're in any other city in the, any other state, go to podpopuli.com to see if they have one near you. If you want to talk about anything you want, start your own podcast. They're a lot of fun. You might even make some money at one one day. Right, Lily? We're trying. <laughs> We're trying. We're percolating some ideas. Well, I didn't start this thing to make money. I just started to talk about sugar dating and all the crazy stories that happened to me and Amy and a few other people, and it's just kind of exploded from there. Sure has. Yeah, and one other uh, piece of business before we get going. Maria Scaptura, our good friend at University of Arkansas, is doing a survey on sugar dating, so... If you'll go to our website, click on survey, and fill out just a few questions. It's quick and easy, and then I would encourage you to do the live interview with her. It's anonymous. Did she ask you your name? No. 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 Didn't not know at your all. name? No. Nope. It's not recorded, so. And she kind of just lets you talk about what you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And she wants as much information as she can get. Yeah. She's compiling a report that she's using for her doctorate, which is kind of cool. I think it's a great subject because it's becoming more and more widely accepted. Hopefully with this podcast, it's helping. I hope so. Yeah. All right. Onward. We have a guest today. We do. And this guest was the very first person to fill out the application for the party. And yeah. so that was an automatic yes. Well, she's an automatic yes because she's gorgeous yeah, well, she for would have one been anyway. thing. Yeah. She's smart. She's motivated. Wow. I didn't know you guys had met. We really haven't, <laughs> but I just know a little bit about her from her application. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. So anyway, she got she's right on impressive. it. She's impressive. I think it was like uh, maybe at the end of June when we announced it, bam, in came her application and and so now uh, we've been talking with her through Instagram. She's had a few questions. Maybe she's got some experiences now. I don't know. We're just going to chat about sugar dating. So welcome, Milani. How are you? Good. Thanks for braving the unknown. Have you ever done a podcast? No. It can be a little nerve wracking. Hopefully we'll make it a good experience for you. We're going to sit here and chat like we were at home, but <laughs> there's microphones in front of us, so... But the nice thing is, is we can edit it and make everybody sound like a superstar. Yeah. Nice. Okay, good. So I know very, very little about you, and mm -hmm. I apologize. But I actually kind of like it this way because our audience is going to get to know you just like we are. So how old are you? I just turned 24 last month. Wow. You don't look a day over 23. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look fantastic. So how long have you lived in this part of the country? My whole life. Oh, so you were born and raised here? I think I actually may have known that. And how long have you been sugar dating? About a few years now, kind of on and off. I haven't really 
treated it as like a full time thing. Like I get very, very busy and kind of caught up in my own hobbies and stuff like yeah. that. And I don't know, just kind of dip in and out. But I'd say two years probably. Okay. So for a I couple years, your profile is a couple years old. No, I made that profile the beginning of this year. I started it like sugar dating mm -hmm. in person. Oh. Yeah. So you met a sugar daddy in the wild? Yeah. As Kimmy would say? Yeah. <laughs> really? How'd that happen? Well, it was very organic. That's why um, I feel like I kind of struggle with the online mm -hmm. way of going about it because all of them really I met at work and they would try to see me outside of work and I'm like, no, 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 I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Yeah. And they would offer to pay for my night off. So that's kind of how it started. Oh, and you're yeah. like, hmm, okay, now you've got my interest. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 And it's happened before. Even when I was serving, I've had people just kind of like walking by, not even my tables, like give me a hundred dollars just to smile. Wow. Yeah. So it really happened very organically. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of liked it. <laughs> well, yeah. Loving it, yeah. Yeah. Help yeah. pay some bills. So how did you hear about Seeking or is that the only one that you're on or are you on mm -hmm. a couple others? Yeah, I'm on Seeking. Just that. I think I had like a benefits account. Yeah. Secret something. benefits. Yeah. SugarDaddy.com. Yeah. For like a day and I didn't really like it. No. Yeah. I didn't like that one either. It just never grew on me. There's only one thing I like about it. <laughs> I know. That's where I actually met my guy, my boyfriend. Wow. I met him on Secret Benefits. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. She's like, yeah, I don't like it, but I know I, I have a love hate relationship I met my with my person. It. Yeah. And he's a great guy. You're going to get to meet him at the party as yes. trucker. Ooh. So that's where she met trucker. Yeah. I didn't stay on there long. Well, I actually got off all of the online dating apps when he and I became exclusive, but then I found myself having a really hard time. We'd have people right into the show. And of course I want to look them up on seeking. So I had to start another like alternative I don't want to call it a fake profile but an alternative profile where I specify that I'm just looking for stories I'm in an exclusive relationship I found my person online but I want to hear your stories about the sugar bowl so I did it kind of like that and it's mostly so I can activate and deactivate and go in and look at these people that have applied to be sugar daddies sponsoring our concert or guys who want to come on the show. Or I just had one guy message me right now as we speak who said, Hey, can you look at my profile? I feel like it's kind of lacking and I'm not getting the traffic that I want to get. So can you look at it and tell me what I could do to improve it? So I kind of need an account just for those purposes. You know, what's crazy. So I've met a couple people since Alejandra and I got exclusive because my seeking account is still active. I paid my money and I'm going to keep it active because, you know, it's pod, good for us to podcast research, be right? able to get in there and check things out. Yeah. So I met a couple people and I've told them about the podcast and they were all excited. And now they're messaging me and we're friends. Right. I had another one on there. She was new, but I could tell she was genuine because she had local photos and her at the Cardinals game and things like that. So obviously, if it was a scammer, they're doing a good job because they have local photos. And we were having a great conversation texting and I told her about it and she goes, oh, that's so interesting. So then I sent her some links to it and then she called me fake. Uh, and I was like, what? She was like, yeah, you're fake. Okay. And I was like, well, I'll FaceTime right now because here's what's happened with, I don't know what we're going to call her. She's going to be on the show soon. We had a triple date the other day and yes. one of our guests flew in for the show. He was solo. We're going to call her Muscles. Okay. Called my friend Muscles. And I said, hey, are you free? Why don't you join us for this triple date? And she's like, yeah, I'm free. We took her to Maple and Ash. She got her entire meal paid for. Those two hit it off. And he gave her $1,000 at the end of the night. Now. Yeah. And my am, guy decided fake? to grab the bill as <laughs> yeah, usual. Right. He's terrible about that. I said, that was not the deal. Our guest wanted to treat. He's like, no. Yeah. Not having it. Yeah. He's our guest. I'll cover it. So I'm keeping in mind because I'm still out there actively trying to help people and answer questions or whatever, because even though I may not be available, I know plenty of guys that are, and these guys are vetted. I've met them. They're genuine. They're generous. I've been playing matchmaker a lot too. Oh yeah. my goodness. I'm going to start charging for my matchmaking <laughs> services. Anyway, we're hijacking Milani's I want to know but... what Milani does for work. 
what industry are you in where you have all these guys hitting on you and trying well, to... Well, she said it was like a server job where that Are was you happening. still doing that? Serving? No. I didn't think so. Yeah, not anymore. That was very temporary. I didn't really like it. It's hard work. Yeah. Those people earn their tips. Oh, yeah. It is yeah. really rough. It can be very lucrative if you're in the right environment. Yes, it can. Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't enjoy it, especially kind of like working with food and it was a lot of bar jobs and it mm-hmm. it was fun. Like I picked them because I enjoyed going there more so as a customer. So I was like, oh, I would love to work here. But I don't know, you get a few beers spilled on you. You have to deal with drunk people when you're like just trying to like do one thing and you've been there for hours and your feet are hurting. So, oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, I had a really, fun. really bad experience cocktail waitressing. Did you? Really? I had a guy physically pick me up Set me on a table and tell me to dance. <laughs> oh, I think yeah, I remember you. Also, if you don't 86 him, I am walking <laughs> out right now. Yeah. And I had a great bar owner boss and she had him out of there in a heartbeat. Good. So you didn't love serving. I understand why yeah. it's got its ups and downs. What exactly. do you do now? I'm in real estate. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. I am too. I'm actually a broker. Oh, Yeah. But I don't have any agents under me. I do my own thing. Because I do a lot of fix and flips and Airbnbs and remodels and things like that. So I bet a lot of clients, male clients, are real happy when they get you as their realtor. Well, it's hard, though, for somebody that young. Yeah. I, it, it really is. They can be gorgeous. They can have their shit together. But they haven't earned the credibility yet with mm-hmm. buyers and sellers. Do you find that being a problem? Yeah. And especially being so new and we're Mm -hmm. starting something right now, my main way of lead generating is cold calls. That's tough. I've been earning my stripes this week. I got cussed out for the first time on Monday. That was kind of fun. That's the thing is I'm so new that stuff like that is still really fun and exciting. I told everyone I got off the dialer and I was like, I just got cussed out for the first time. Everyone congratulated me. They're like, nice. And then (laughs) today, my fifth call in, this guy was like, don't call me anymore. I'm going to eat your children. <laughs> like oh my crazy gosh. stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Well, it's such a tough industry right now, too, with the interest rates continuing to go up, oh inventories going up. Everybody's just kind of on the sidelines. I know it sucks. But the great thing about Arizona, why I wouldn't discourage you from being in the business, is we are still the fastest growing county in America year after year after year. So people are moving here, people do need housing. Mm-hmm. My parents built a house in 1982 and interest rates were 16, 17%. Wow. Yeah. Now, of course, their house was 100000 and it's a little different versus a four or five or $600,000 home, the payment on, you know, at that high interest rates. But yeah. And then they just kept refinancing as rates went down. Well, so. dear God, fixer uppers now are in I know. the. 300,000, 400,000, 500,000 range. Yeah, I just bought one. What is going on? I bought one in Tempe and I paid 350,000 for a house I have to absolutely gut and start over with. Yeah. So that's the way it is. But we're going to sell it for probably That's nice when you sell one because that's going to be a healthy commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I'm not too, too worried about, well, I am, but I feel like I'm in this for the long term. Mm -hmm. So the way I see it is if I can get through it right now when the market's so terrible, I can get through anything. Yeah. 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 Well, part of the process is just to show up. (laughs) I have a bracelet that says show up. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. My sugar baby gave that to me and it means so much to me. Mm -hmm. Just those words show up. I said, I'm in real estate. I've been a broker for over 20 years. Let's see. I've had my license for over 20 years, been a broker for... What, about 15, but people would ask me, how are you successful in this industry when there's so much competition? And the biggest thing is I just kept showing up and are learning and getting better. And then all of a sudden I found some clients and I earned their trust and uh, just went from there and then referrals and you just build. And then what you want to do is as you're making money, you want to start investing in other real estate projects that continuously bring you money. It can make you money while you sleep. Because as you know, if I find a buyer for a house, I get a nice fat commission, but then I got to get my ass back to work Mm -hmm. because that's not going to pay the bills forever. Okay. So did you say that you met your first sugar daddy in the wild? Mm -hmm. Tell us what that looked like. Well, so he was kind of like my first, but he didn't want to like 
be referred to as like a sugar daddy. That's the thing is when I would be in Scottsdale going out a lot, I would meet a lot of guys like that, but I didn't even realize like I was so oblivious that they could have been potential sugar daddies and stuff like that. I was just out with my friends and just focused on the girls and things like that. A lot of missed opportunities. Just thinking Mm -hmm. back on that. Met him in the wild. Really just kind of like how I explained a little bit earlier. He was a regular at the restaurant and he would always kind of flirt with me, try to date me. And I would always just brush him off because it's like, no, like I've always been very, very ambitious and wanting to do more. So thinking long term. So when I would be serving, I would work on my passions because I also have a lot of hobbies. I'm a busy girl. So I would just have my priorities elsewhere. And I didn't know him, you know, so it's like, why would I make you a priority? How much older was he than you? Mm, I think he was maybe 20 years older. Okay. Yeah. And so you finally agree to go out with him. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. The only reason why we stopped going out is because, so he was a doctor Ooh. and well, still is, I'm sure. And he would pay me, I think it was 400 to just to take the night off. Okay. And then he tried to cut it. Oh yeah. Mm. We do that. We're sneaky yeah. that way. But the thing is, I'm like, listen, like I, if anything, I'm appreciating. So I'm going to be costing more, yeah. not less. Like I'm only getting smarter, sexier. Wait, you and sound like, like Alejandra. <laughs> really? She says that? Oh, well, we went exclusive. Mm-hmm. So now she's like, you know, I think I deserve a raise because you're going to be saving all this money. because You're not dating all these other girls. And she's trying to work her way up. And mm-hmm. you're getting, you know, the sexy time is getting more with me and. That's no. valid. Yeah. Good point. Hey, I couldn't argue with her. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no arguing with that one. Oh, no, no. Yeah, you're going to get to meet her. She's a lot of fun. She's about your age, just a little bit older. Really? A couple years. She's 26. Oh. So, all right. So, you and the doctor went out for how long? Oh, a few like, like a year, you said? Oh, no, not a year. Oh, no. That lasted a few months, probably almost a year. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So, how did you hear about seeking, first of all? It was something that I heard for a few years, and I think I probably downloaded it or set up an account in high school, but I never did anything with it. (laughs) I was just so interested. And that's the thing is I've never really had friends that were into that too. So it was just a lot to navigate on my own, and I just didn't really feel safe because it's very different online dating as a woman. The man, they go and they're like, oh, I hope she's not fat. Me, at the very least, I hope I don't come up missing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so I didn't really do anything with it. So I deleted the account and then this year I made another one. Okay, so do you currently have a sugar daddy? No. And what are you looking for in a sugar daddy? Just something natural and like respect. That's why it's very different doing it online. There's probably just too much competition and I don't have any pictures like you guys have even seen my Instagram. I probably look like a spam account, but well, I'll tell you what. She's one of these rare ones that are better in person. Mm -hmm. Have you been told that? I have. Yeah. Yeah. It's very rare. Most people, they take great pictures and then in person, they're a little rough. You're opposite. You present yourself much better. I don't you agree, Lily? I didn't really look at her account too much, (laughs) but I will say, I mean, personality is huge Mm -hmm. and this smile and she's wonderful. She's gorgeous. Yeah. I think her pictures were good too. I don't really remember, but yeah, she's stunning. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I honestly, I thought you looked a little thin in your photos. Mm -hmm. She's very thin. Well, I know she is very thin, but she could be a model. Definitely. How tall are you? Without the heels, 5'4". Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, she would be a catch. She would definitely be somebody that I would message that would catch my eye. Yeah. Oh, for sure. A hundred percent. You're so, right up his alley. Oh, I know. The, I like the brown girls and the and the brunette. Perfect. How did you hear about our podcast? I just came across it on Spotify. Yeah? What would you yeah. type in? I didn't type in anything. It just I randomly think. appeared? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Because I don't really listen to too many podcasts. Well, I was probably searching something else i don't know i've been listening for a few months now like not a year i don't Mm -hmm. know how long you guys have been going for but about two and a half years two and a half years okay yeah yeah i don't remember i didn't really look up sugar daddy or anything on spotify i don't think anything would come up 
maybe it was like a Megan Thee Stallion song because I think she has like a Sugar Daddy song or something. Yeah. And then you guys popped up and I'm like, this is interesting. But yeah. I can't remember specifically how I found it. Okay. I didn't know this was a thing. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so what have you learned so far? Just, I guess, that there's a lot more range and ways to go about it than previously expected. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. No, it does. Yeah. I learn something new in this world every time I go online. Yeah. And every time I meet somebody, things come out of the woodwork that I'm like, what? That's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like Interesting. What? Like fetishes. Oh. Fetishes I'd never heard of. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's just a lot of that. We've out. had to Google things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. And then we had just talked about too in our last podcast about this girl she had messaged us so somebody had contacted her to be a sugar baby for their sugar baby <laughs> and yeah. Lily and I were like Wait, something what? new that was a new one and then mm. Kevin and Vivian looked at each other and go mm, yeah kind of looking for the same thing oh yes but yeah. they want a chunky redhead yeah they're looking for a specific type so and Lily and I were like wow we had no idea there was that but, niche yeah. Uh, yeah but then it reminded me too that amy had a sugar daddy that would look actually for sugar babies for her so i don't know why i well, was the, thinking i hadn't heard of it because i guess i had the porn star yeah girl. yep charlie phoenix charlie phoenix mm -hmm. yeah yeah one of amy's i think sugar daddies introduced them yeah that was originally for amy it never worked out no yeah i mean chemistry is a big deal Mm -hmm. If it's there, it's there. If it's yeah. not, you can't force it. Well, I think it. she was just yeah. too busy, too. Yeah, she's so. a busy girl. So you say you have all these hobbies. What are you into? I love to dance. I love to paint. I like to try new things. I really want to learn how to golf this year. I think that'd be fun. Well, uh, you know what? Amy is buying golf clubs because she's found out that she really likes it and she wants to learn. Alejandra, I took her to the driving range the other day, and now she wants to learn. They want to take lessons together, so maybe there's an opportunity to do like a little girls' lesson thing. Because we, Trucker, really wants me to learn how to golf. Really, we've been looking at clubs, and he's like, "If well, I buy I, you these, you got to really." I'll tell you do what. It. And I was like, "You can just teach me." He's like, "No, I'm going to pay for lessons for you." You don't even have to be that good if you can just get yourself around and laugh and not hold up the entire course. You will start meeting people at the golf course that make a tremendous difference in your life. I certainly have. Getting into real estate, when I buy a fixer-upper or like a foreclosure at the courthouse steps, I don't know if you're familiar with this process, but when you win the bid, let's say it's 400000 and I'm the winner of this house, I have to have that money to them in 24 hours. $400,000. Now, what if I don't have it, which I don't, I go to one of my country club friends who are wealthy and they have money in the bank earning shit interest. And I say, look, I'll pay you 10, 12% interest or whatever it is, whatever I negotiate, I need a check for 400,000 or whatever to buy this house. And your money is secured, not by me, but by the real estate. So if I disappear to Mexico, you're still covered. And they love real estate investments. Men with money or anybody with money loves real estate because it's a hard asset mm -hmm. and where did i meet those guys at the country club playing golf so that's my shout out to why you should learn the game and why that's a good goal of yours nice yeah thank you and i've gotten a ton of real estate business through golf a lot of it because these guys also buy investment properties and they sell investment properties and when they decide that they want to buy or sell i'm an agent i'm a broker i can help them out so, That's perfect, yeah. You just never know who you're going to meet and play with. My, I remember in, when I was in eighth grade, I hadn't picked up the game yet, but my parents used to play, and we would just go out and hunt for balls. I mean, it, I love doing that because, you know, like hunting Easter eggs, right? Mm -hmm. So in eighth grade, my mom asked me, she says, hey, do you want to learn how to play? And my mom can't even hardly break 100. But she says, I'll take you to the range, and she showed me some basics and I just fell in love with the game. And then I ended up having some friends and we all got competitive. They played too. And we were all terrible, but we just got better and better and better. And we ended, and by the time I was a senior in high school, my team got fourth place in this entire state of Texas, my high school team. And then I ended up getting a golf scholarship. 
Another buddy of mine went to got went to a school, got a golf scholarship. Another one of my friends ended up becoming the head coach of the University of Oklahoma golf team. And he had very famous golfers come through his program. So the game is just absolutely amazing. And going back to my mother, she says, you know what? You can play for the rest of your life. You can play with a president of the United States or you can play with a local plumber. You just never know who you're going to play with. But everybody's pretty equal there because they have a handicap system there where they can make it fun. Like I could play against Tiger Woods. He'd have to give me like 20 shots, but we could play an even round and have fun. Yeah. So that's kind of how the golf works. But I definitely encourage you, if you want to make contacts and if you want to meet sugar daddies in the wild, that's another good spot. Yeah. Is is on the golf course. Yeah. I think that's for me because, you know, like I said, I have those problems online. And maybe that's why I don't like taking pictures. Maybe I am just better in person, but I don't know what I look like in person. I could just go based off pictures. But how do you do that? Your photos are good. Your photos are good. But I'm just telling you, your presence in person is elevated it's just much better than because you, you can only see so much of in a photo mm-hmm. yeah and i never smile in pictures that i, I just feel goofy maybe that's <laughs> why because she has a beautiful smile oh she does oh, yeah. she's got these full voluptuous lips oh yeah these gorgeous perfect teeth did you have braces i did have braces yeah perfect teeth thank you yeah very pretty i had braces twice and i still got fucked up teeth my bottom one still shifted and somebody's like because you didn't wear your retainer. You have mm-hmm. to wear it for the rest of your life. I'm like, I'm not wearing that thing for the rest of my life. Sorry. Yeah. No, they gave me, I don't know why they did this, but they gave me a permanent one on the bottom. Oh, permanent one? Yeah. And then like the Invisalign too. type one for my top, yeah. which obviously like I lost that years ago. Yeah. yeah. I think I had a permanent one and then it finally came off and then I moved and never did anything about it, but I should have kept it. So have you had any scary encounters with your online dating not too much aside from like being catfish in a way them being disappointing yeah. but I'm so careful and picky about who I even meet with in person that that hasn't really happened That's luckily good. yeah All right, so do you get a lot of messages or yeah. do you reach out I get messages I don't know if I should reach out is that something that girls do I'll tell you what. Some do. When I open I don't my tend to. When I open my inbox and I see six messages from girls, I'll read them and then some of them I'm like, "Oh yeah, I like this one." And then I'll start conversing with them. I would have never messaged her because there's thousands of girls online. Mm-hmm. Like literally I, and I tell people, if you want to get noticed, you need to click on the site a few times a day because I never go past girls that aren't online. I only search who's online now. And it'll be a hundred per page and I'll go three or four pages deep before it ever gets to people that aren't online. So if you're not online, you're not getting noticed. Not in this area. Mm. Just saying. If I have it pulled up on my desktop, Mm -hmm. just like as an open tab and I don't close it, but I'm not actually on it. Yeah. It'll show you online. Oh, okay. Even if my laptop's off. As long as you have it pulled up somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Because I've had many times where like Alejandra, I'll say, it's showing you're online. She goes, and she'll show me her phone and she goes, does it look like I'm online? <laughs> yeah. But she, but any, like she'll pull up her browser for something and it's still in the browser. It's still open. So yeah, I, I used I to you never to, close out a yeah, mine. Don't close it. Don't close it. Just because I wanted to get the traffic. Yeah. You'll get more messages that way. Do you browse the men's profiles? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you see somebody that catches your interest, I would definitely message them you can use the age old one that I get a hundred times a month. Hi. Hey. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So eye catching. Oh, <laughs> uh, I know. Girls don't have to do much. Mm-hmm. They want guys to be creative and funny and have some charisma, but girls, all they have to do is say hi and bat their eyes, right? <laughs> That's true. Wink. Wink. Yeah, wink, do wink. a little winky sign. What's um, the oh sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, I was just gonna say there was one that got my attention. I was just going to pull it up. She says... um, Yeah, that's actually what I was going to ask. Like, what catches your attention? Yeah, so this one says... And she's brand new. She says she's from Arizona City, Arizona. And I'm looking at her profile. She's cute. There's no local pictures. She's on a boat. She's on a beach. She's at some party. She's in our house. We know there's no beaches in Arizona. 
<laughs> There's no <laughs> oceans. So the, none of these are local. Her, our account's brand new. I'm like red flag after red flag after red flag. She's in a city that nobody lives in. Certainly nobody that looks like that. But she messages me and says, a tech company and he likes to golf? Please tell me more. So she's actually looked at my profile because I do say something about golf and uh, owning a tech company in there. So then I asked to look at her photos. She gave them to me, her private photos. I didn't say anything because I was really busy. And then she says, I don't normally beg unless I'm in person. Don't make me beg. And I'm like, okay, now you got my attention. <laughs> yeah, right. that'll do it. Yeah. I even showed Alejandra. Even though Alejandra and I are exclusive, I'm still talking, you know, podcast research. <laughs> so I gave her my number, and then she said that she just texted me. So I haven't responded yet. Matter of fact, I didn't get it. I was wondering if I gave her the right number. <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah, I encourage you, if you do see somebody that, has your interest oh and there's another girl that messaged me now this story goes back to 2018 like six years ago now or five years ago she saw that i have a tech company and real estate and she was coming in from out of town she was also into the exact same thing she had a, a startup tech company and she was in real estate so it caught her attention she messaged me first she ended up coming down this is one of those crazy, crazy ass sugar dating stories where she ended up getting arrested for kidnapping. Yeah. I've told this story before. Her I, own kids, right? Yeah, it was her own kids. I'm hesitant to, mm. to get into all the details again. But anyway, she served time up in Canada. It was for legitimate reasons. She went about it wrong and she paid the price. And we're still friends to this day. Here, five years later, we still talk, not as much as we used to. You know, she messaged me first, and I absolutely adore her. She helped me through a breakup. We talked on like almost every day during a pretty traumatic breakup that I had. I really need to go up there to Canada and see her again. But I'm actually thinking of contacting her. My tech company actually programmers just finished, and we're about to relaunch a business that I'd launched ten years ago, but I had to shut it down during the divorce. We're about to relaunch it, and I think she would be a great candidate to help me with this whole project and even become a part owner. That's all because she reached out to me on Seeking. Reach out on Seeking. Got there it. There you go. <laughs> so a long story, you know, of why, uh, or of just some personal stories of why I've responded to people that have reached out to me, and it's gone very, very well Okay. in the long run. That's good. I mean, you never know. Kind of going back to you your start. the show up. I yeah. really like that. Yeah. Cause sometimes I can get so lazy. Like, yeah. So lazy. Yeah. That I don't really put myself in the position to get opportunities. But every time I do, I never regret it. I yeah. I used to go on probably like five to 10 meet and greets a week when I was looking for somebody to connect with. 10? Five to 10? Five to 10. Oh, a I know week. the five number's nice. pretty accurate. You would do up to 10. Yeah, there's. I know you were doing a lot I of mean, them. You do two or three a day on weekdays. I would go grab a coffee with one guy <laughs> and then lunch with another guy, or yeah. a morning coffee and an afternoon coffee, and you know, ninety percent of them don't go anywhere. And you just don't feel it, but ten percent of them go somewhere. The first meeting with Kylie, with the girl with the seven eight carat diamond ring that we had on our show a few weeks ago, and we were doing sushi and she's like, yeah, I went on three meet and greets this morning and then one this afternoon. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, she's how, ambitious. Do you, how do you have time for all that? And she works, but it was her I slow know. season because yeah. she's in accounting. Yeah, that's right. So. I want to do that. I feel like I just have such a long qualifying process for them and they never meet it. And I just get so scared. I'm like, I'd rather just not waste my time and mm -hmm. gas and well, it yeah, is actually very good that you're so selective. Yeah. Uh, there's been times when I wasn't that selective just because curiosity kills the lily. And so I just had to meet these guys in person and see. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just can't tell from their profile how they're going to translate face to face. And some went amazingly well and others some we have that stories. I was like, this is just going to be a story for the yes. podcast and that's why I'm doing it. And then... <laughs> Uh, surprisingly, I really like the person and we had things in common. There's so many that I'm still friends with to this day that it was never going to be a long-term relationship, but 
we have a long-term friendship. Speaking of which, my little old man. Yeah. I've heard from him again recently. And he pestered me and pestered me. You know how he gets. Yeah. And he's going to hear this because I finally gave him the name for the podcast. Oh, you did? And he loves it. He absolutely loves it. And he's what, 76? 70, probably about 76 now. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm sure he's had a birthday since we've met. Mm -hmm. And he loves it. (laughs) That's so cute. Your little old man. My little old man. Well, yeah, she went out with him. I told him I don't want to tell you about the podcast because I've talked about you a lot on here. And some of the stuff I said was wonderful and some of it not so much. And I go, it's nothing I haven't said to your face, but... He can be a little pushy at times, and I let him know that that was not going to work for me. But even though Lily is open to age differences, it just she just felt like she was out with her grandfather. Yeah, and he it, gave me that vibe. Yeah. And, it and just he's so yeah. sweet mm-hmm. and kind, and I'll be friends with him for life. I've met him. Yeah, you have. He showed up at my house <laughs> unexpectedly with some furniture for you. Yeah, because he thought he was coming to my house. That's what I mean <laughs> about he's low-key manipulative. Like, he wanted to know where I lived. So I just gave him yeah, my, address. my <laughs> boss's address. Yeah, And he was like, I thought I was showing up to your house. I'm like, nope, you sure weren't. <laughs> that is bold. Yes. That is very bold. He is very bold. But he tells me every time I talk to him how much he appreciates me, how much he likes me as a person, and that if I ever need anything, just let him know he's there for me. Mm -hmm. And he has. He's done some incredible things for me. He flew out to my little small hometown and drove my Jeep three hours back to the valley to help me sell it. Wait, how did he fly out there? He had a friend with a private airplane, and they went to our little airport, and... The guy basically landed, dropped off my little old man, and flew back. And then my little old man drove my Jeep up here and helped me sell it and helped me get my car. Yeah. Wow. So there is a lot of quality people online. Yeah. It's just you got to, as you are finding out, you got to dig through a lot of bullshit. So just to go to your vetting process, do you get into specifics on like allowance and PPM expectations? What is your preference there? No, I really, I mean, first of all, I'd like to at least like hop on the phone with them, you know, voice to voice or like FaceTime just to make sure that they're a real person. Mm -hmm. And then I really don't like to get into all that until we at least meet and like make sure that we like each other and there's like actual chemistry there. That's why I get kind of put off when they're like trying to imply intimacy before we even meet. It's like, what if you're not even like, it's mutual. Like what if you're not even attracted to me? Like we haven't even met yet. I see so many men getting just deep and graphic and dirty. And the very beginning you're like, we haven't even met yet. You men are just horny motherfuckers. (laughs) I know, but you know what? Yeah. You just got to have some tact. It's just, I see these messages and I just shake my head. I can't even believe. And even in like the Reddit forums. You ever read those on the sugar dating forums online? I haven't. I usually use Reddit though for reviews. Like I'm trying to learn another language. I'm like, how good's Duolingo? And then I'll go to Reddit and yeah. like I'll ask Reddit. But That's good. yeah, I haven't seen that for Well, like, they've got sure. a really good sugar dating forums and we're actually even starting our own subreddit in there, the Secrets of a Sugar Daddy podcast forum where people can put all kinds of sugar dating questions or comments or whatever in there they'll screenshot text from men and you're like, okay, you were doing so well until you got to talking about your penis. Like, did you have to go there so quickly? Yeah. No <laughs> transition. I know. It's, just, it's so stupid. Yeah. I don't. Get it. There's so many men that just want to show you the goods yeah. before you even meet. That was unsolicited, sir. Yeah. And that's the thing too. Do they not think, well, what if she's a catfish? Yeah. It'll be so early on in the conversation. Do you guys mm-hmm. not think that? I don't do that. So, but I know that Alejandra's had some experiences where she didn't talk about her allowance expectations. And then she got to the meet and greet and the guy's like, yeah, I'm thinking about $200 a week and see you five times a week. I kid you not. This was an actual conversation. And she's like, um, no, I'm, you know, I need at least blank amount per week. And the guy's like, whoa, man, you know, I'm married. I don't have that kind of cash. She's like, I'm just wasting my fucking time here with this guy. Yeah. 
So, and that's the thing too, is it's a luxury. I haven't seen what Alejandra looks like, but mm-hmm. I'm sure even just seeing you, like a lot of the women that are on there, it's a luxury to sit down with them. If you can't afford it, yeah. don't be in the lifestyle. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be super wealthy. Like we had Dwayne on here, sugar daddy Dwayne. And he's like, look, I'm not a wealthy guy. I have some disposable income mm-hmm. and I have blank amount for a budget for dating and it's sufficient enough to be a sugar daddy. So it's not like you have to be worth five, ten million dollars, although that helps. Because yeah. <laughs> dating is expensive. Yeah. I know Alejandra and I the other day were trying to add up. Have I talked about this on the podcast? You yet? haven't. Oh my God, maybe I shouldn't. I think you <laughs> mentioned it to Trucker though, and he was like, Holy so, shit. Alejandra and I were adding we're like, How much do you think you've spent on sugar dating since you've started? I'm like, Okay, well I started seven years ago and I know how much my allowance was to a few sugar babies during that year consistently and then on dating and then I paid her rent and then I did this and paid her car payment so I started adding that up I bet I have spent this makes me almost sick to my stomach but probably close to seven hundred thousand dollars on sugar dating and dating since my divorce a hundred grand a year yeah Pro- at least a hundred grand a year. Yeah. Wow. And I want to ask Dr. Charles <laughs> where he's at because he, that guy is spending two to three to five times as that much. That guy me. is so generous. I know. I mean, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. Seems worth it. Like, but you know what? Time. I'm going to go to my grave with no regrets. Mm-hmm. Like I don't regret. Well, it's not like you have children that, that you need yeah. to save them up True. for their inheritance or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. But I'm thinking I can't even believe that number. But you know what? I've had the greatest time. I've had so much fun. I've met great people. We've dug through the bullshit to find the diamonds in the rough. And we've formed a just a, a nice little family that's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you're going to meet Milani at this party. People from all over the country and maybe a few people from other countries that are in this lifestyle. And you're going to find out. I don't know how much you've congregated with other people that are on Seeking or have done this. It's a big love fest. You all feel connected. Mm-hmm. And it's an amazing, right, Lily? It's just this oh, yeah. amazing feeling. Yeah. yeah, some of my best friends I've met because of sugar dating, for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, I met yeah. through seeking. Very Our first. Girl, my. That's crazy. Yeah. My other daughter. Yeah, Kimmy. Yeah. Right. Oh, I think I said her real name. I know, but you got the bleep button. In Beep. <laughs> My Kimmy. Yeah. My little Kimmy. What's really funny is, so I met Lily and we had a lot of fun, but we were just, we've talked about this multiple times. We were so much alike and we felt like brother and sister. And and I just had such an interest in seeing her successful and we just stayed in touch. Then I met Kimmy, who's complete opposite of Lily. She's (laughs) a wild child. Age and everything. And I tried to introduce these two in the beginning, and Lily's kind of stand off. She's he like, He tried uh, to make me be roommates with her. And well, I'm like, You want me yeah. in 50s to be roommates with a 21 year old? That is never going to work. Right, right. I'm not having it. But uh, no. The funny thing is, is, and they never did become roommates, but once they met and started hanging around each other, and just because of the lifestyle, I think. You guys. No, it's because of her personality. Yeah. And our personality is connected. Yeah. And she's she's such a smart, sweet, funny person. Mm-hmm. And I do feel kind of motherly, motherly toward her. Yeah. And she, you know, she stayed at my house a few days before we went to New York. We've traveled together. You've we met just, sugar daddies in New York together. Yeah. We've met sugar daddies in the wild at the W together. Oh, that's right. That's right. So she and I just... We just have a good connection and it's yeah. kind of mother daughter, but it's also just a fun friend that I can just open up to about anything. We don't have to hide our lifestyle or what we're looking for. And yeah, she's a great girl. Yeah. I love that. So you're going to get to meet all kinds of people at the party that have the same interest. A lot of great sugar daddies, too. I don't think any of these guys are going to be creepy. Like, most of them we've met. There's a few that we haven't. But the ones that we haven't met, they seem like great guys. Yeah. yeah. And it's generous. It's going to be quite. And yeah, they're coming in from a few places around the country. And it's 
<laughs> it's gonna be a fun week. Quite the ensemble. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. So, I am too. I can't wait to meet the ones we haven't met. I know, right? And I've been communicating with them, but really mostly just via texting or yeah. social media. So mm-hmm. I can't wait to meet him. But in we person. had a late sponsor and he sent us his sugar daddy money for the party. And then he's like, Yeah, and here's eight hundred dollars for airfare for somebody. So we're flying in somebody. That's who's actually asking me oh. for profile advice. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember what we called him on the show. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Jay. It was Jay. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Jay. Well, Milani, before we end, tell us, have you had any like absolutely just crazy, like a crazy meet and greet or crazy sugar date that you just went, people aren't going to believe this? Hmm. Nothing too, too crazy. I think one of the experiences that was the most fun was going to the casino and just using his money the whole time. I was having so much fun. You know what? You girls do have fun with that because yeah. I've done that a couple times. And <laughs> fortunately for me, I won and I gave all the winnings to them as their allowance. And so it was a free night for me. Yeah. <laughs> but I've done that like multiple times. We've gone play blackjack or craps. I took a girl and she'd never played before. We went into the high limit room and I gave her a stack of chips, and I had a stack of chips. And then, of course, she didn't know how to play, so it was like me playing both hands. I'm telling her what to do every hand. Yeah. Those are fun nights, aren't those are they? Those really fun because I was in the same position. I had no idea how to play, and it was yeah. one of those things where I've always wanted to learn, but I'm not going to yeah. put my own money on the line like that. So yeah. it was just like that, and I was just like having so much fun, and I couldn't tell if I was winning or losing, but I was having a great time. Yeah, those are fun nights. I did have a kind of a bad experience Actually, I've had a couple bad experiences at the casino where a girl was actually addicted to slot machines. I took this girl and I went in to play blackjack and I was winning. I won like a thousand dollars and she comes to me with these puppy dog eyes. I already given her like two or three or four hundred dollars. I can't remember to go play. She comes in like 10 minutes later, these puppy dog eyes. I'm like, what happened? She's like, I lost all my money. Okay. And then I gave her like five or six hundred more off of my stack. She's like all happy. She goes out and she comes back in puppy dog eyes. Are you kidding me? She's like, well, yeah, but you got to play max bet on these things or they don't pay off. And I just play, I don't know why the machines are cold. So I gave her more money. And fortunately I was winning. It wasn't really costing me anything, but we ended up going to the casino again and we were up. I think she was up. She did hit for like a thousand dollars. And I said, all right, great. You're up. Let's go. And she couldn't leave. She literally could not leave. She goes, no, let me just play. Let me just play. And she got almost combative. Let's go have fun. Let's go back to my house. We're done. Like, take your winnings, run. She ended up losing it all. Mm -hmm. And I was so pissed at her. She just could not walk away. And I didn't know she has had that problem. And I never took her there again. That was it. I didn't know that she couldn't control herself. But I found out really quick. So Is that true, though, that it's only worth it if you do the max bet? Yeah, to hit the big jackpot. Oh, She's okay. trying to hit the big jackpots. Oh. You know, ones are like millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars. You got to do max bets. Yeah. yeah. Well, I admire her ambition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, she had her eye on the prize. And it's yeah. just so much easier to max bet if you're max betting somebody else's money. Yeah, that's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly yeah. right. Well, Milani, we really appreciate you coming in. It goes fast, doesn't it? Yeah, really fast. You're like thinking, what are we going to talk about? Like, do you have some backup plans? (laughs) Like, uh, no, we'll get through this. I promise you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to seeing you at the party. Mm -hmm. Guys, go to our website. If you want in our future parties, we're going to have the information there. But always we want to hear your crazy sugar dating stories. So there's a form there you can fill out or you can email us directly at SOSD. It stands for Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. So SOSD podcast at gmail.com. Melania, have you ever heard of the OMG Yes program? I've heard of it. Yeah, it's a great program. It's interactive on your phone and it teaches you how to pleasure a woman properly. And it's a one time fee and you will absolutely love it. So I encourage you to make that purchase because I wouldn't recommend something I haven't tried myself. So uh, you'll find the link at the bottom of our website. So just go to our main page, go all the way to the bottom, and you'll see a link to that. What do you think of that one, Lily? I think do it. Yes. Have I showed it to you? Pleasure those women. You sure did. I did. And it's (laughs) very interactive, but it is tastefully done. Yeah, it's great. All right. You get to practice. Yep. Is it cartoony? 
No. They, so they actually show you a picture of a vagina on your phone, and it shows you how to rub it correctly and tells you if you're doing it too fast or too slow and the different techniques. And it gives you percentages like 67% of women like this technique, and it actually pleasures them. 73% have found orgasm through this method, blah, 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 blah. It's not 100%. But at least if you know something's not working, you've got backups and you can try other things. What do you think of that, Melania? I like that. More guys should know that, huh? Definitely. Everybody, (laughs) everybody go down. Even the women, right? Even the women should know it. So, well, um, yeah, there are women who like to pleasure other women. So, Mm -hmm. subscribe. There you go. And learn. That's right. All right. And then uh, also we'll have a link to our Patreon page. We just mentioned that in the last episode. uh, We're working on great content there. Become a VIP member. That's right. Okay, until next time. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to connect or even be on the show, we'd love to hear from you at secretsofasugardaddy.com.